Hello and welcome to today's lesson on radioactive emissions which is part of the atomic structure in GCSE separate science physics. In today's lesson we're going to look at understanding the properties of different radioactive emissions. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson we should be able to understand why radiation is emitted by nuclei, understand the different compositions of the different radioactive emissions and understand the different properties of the different types of radioactive emissions which falls into the following part of the GCSE separate science physics topic atomic structure 4.4.2.1 radioactive decay and nuclear radiation now in the 1810s John Dalton had proposed the atomic theory to explain the existence of different elements in the universe the main points of this theory were elements are made of extremely small particles called atoms atoms of a given element are identical in size and mass and all other properties but the atoms of different elements differ in size mass and other properties now atoms cannot be subdivided created or destroyed but atoms of different elements can combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds as in chemical reactions atoms are combined separated or rearranged now Dalton then investigated the weight of these atoms and published a table of the relative atomic weights now once the weights of the atoms have been measured it was then decided that the atoms of different elements needed to be placed in an order so this led to the work of Newlands, Bezalius and Lavoisier all of which were chemists who tried to place an order to the different atoms found in the universe but in 1874 Dmitri Mendeleev had formulated the periodic table to provide a standard order to the atoms and therefore science began to think we knew everything there was to know in the universe about atoms it had been reasoned that we knew all the elements of the universe so everything of the universe is now known this led to the leading British scientists of the day Lord Kelvin remarking that there's nothing new to be discovered in physics now all that remains is more and more precise measurement however this all changed with a discovery from France by scientist Henri Becquerel in 1881 as he realised the element uranium was emitting energy in the form of particles. Now this seemed to break the laws of energy conservation. As we know energy can't be created, energy cannot be destroyed, so it seemed like the rock was creating energy in the form of particles from nothing. And, but what was actually was discovered was that the unstable nuclei of the uranium were radioactively decaying and releasing nuclear radiation. What Becquerel had discovered was radiation and radiation radioactivity but this led to some questions what causes nuclear radiation to occur and why do only some nuclei exhibit this radioactive behavior because some nuclei like uranium-235 are radioactive and emit nuclear radiation yet other nuclei like oxygen-16 are not radioactive they do not emit radiation so what's going on well nuclear radiation is produced when unstable nuclei emit either particles or energy and change to be become more stable. This entire process is called nuclear decay. Now a nucleus can do this by one of three methods, either emitting alpha radiation, emitting beta radiation or emitting gamma radiation. So nuclear radioactivity is the process of a nucleus becoming more stable in its configuration. Now all unstable nuclei want to become more stable and they do this via nuclear decay. And there are three types of radiation which a nucleus can emit to become more stable alpha radiation, beta radiation or gamma radiation. Now again this process is called a nuclear decay. It's called a decay because the nucleus is releasing either particles or energy to become more stable. So all nuclear decays are events which increase the stability of the nucleus and so as a result the unstable nuclei will give off radiation and become a more stable nucleus. Now Oh, this process only involves the nucleus of an atom. This is not atomic decay, it's nuclear decay. So do not use the phrase atoms when considering this decay process. Now radiation is the energy or particles given off by the nucleus to shed excess energy. Another name for this radiation is radioactive emissions. And like we mentioned before, there are three types of radioactive decay an unstable nucleus can undergo. So therefore, there are three forms of radiation depending on the type of the unstable nucleus but the, all the radiation always originates from the nucleus of an atom so you can either emit alpha radiation beta radiation or gamma radiation to become more stable now all these types of radiation are called ionizing radiation they're called ionizing radiation because these radiations ionize particles that they encounter which means that they can knock electrons out of atoms but why does the emission of alpha beta and gamma increase the nuclear stability 
Well, a nucleus is radioactive or unstable if it contains a lot more neutrons than it does protons. So in this image, there are 12 neutrons in the nucleus and 9 protons. So it has more neutrons than protons, so the nucleus is unstable. Now just to clarify something, in reality, the protons and neutrons on a nucleus are constantly moving around, churning and turning, changing the shape of the nucleus slightly. So as there are more neutrons than protons, the nucleus is unstable, so it wishes to release radiation to become stable, we say this nucleus is radioactive. So that's why many heavier isotopes of elements tend to be radioactive. So that hydrogen isotope with three uh, as an atomic number, okay, so two, two neutrons, one proton, is radioactive, but when it's H1 with only one proton, no neutrons, it is stable. So in this particular concept, nuclear, this nucleus has nine neutrons and nine protons. So because the number of protons equals the number of neutrons, this this nucleus is going to be stable. It will not release any radioactive emissions. It is not radioactive, which is why many lighter isotopes are stable. So for example, carbon-12 is stable, yet carbon-14, with its extra neutrons, is radioactive. Now the aim of radioactivity is to reduce the number of neutrons compared to protons in the nucleus. Our stable nucleuses are achieved when the proton number is approximately the same as the neutron number. So this process of changing the number of neutrons compared to protons protons releases radiation. Now alpha decay is the release of two protons and two neutrons as a helium nucleus from the unstable nucleus. Beta decay is the release of an electron from the unstable nucleus after a neutron in the, that nucleus has turned into a proton and that electron. And gamma decay is the release of an excess energy from the unstable nucleus. But what are the properties of each of these radioactive emissions? Well alpha radiation is the release of an alpha particle and occurs in heavy elements like like uranium and radium and it's made of two neutrons and two protons so it's an overall charge of plus two and a mass of four atomic mass units so our alpha radiation is two protons two neutrons it has a positive charge which means the alpha particles would deflect to the south pole of a magnet or the negative of an electrical field because opposites attract the alpha particle has a relatively large mass which means that they are highly ionizing but they can only travel about five centimeters in air but it also means that that they're absorbed by materials like paper or anything denser. But always remember alpha particles are only emitted from a nucleus. So just to clarify on alpha radiation, it has a high ionizing ability but a low penetration and is stopped by paper. Now alpha particles are just helium nuclei. Now helium is safe while alpha is dangerous as the alpha has no electrons which means that's got a positive charge so it will rip off electrons from other atoms plus it's a lot faster than a normal helium atom. Now remember, this radiation comes from the nucleus of an atom. So here's an animation showing us an alpha radiation where our alpha particle is emitted and we have a smaller, more stable nucleus left behind, which is a very important concept. Now, in beta emission, a beta particle is emitted when a neutron in the nucleus changes to a proton and releases a negative charge in the form of a fast-moving electron. So it's very important to talk about this idea. So beta particles have a negative charge. This means deflect towards the north pole of a magnet or the positive of an electrical field. Now beta particles have a mass smaller than an alpha particle which means they'll actually deflect more in a magnetic or electrical field than the alpha particle but it also means that they're moderately ionizing, they travel about one meter in air and they will be absorbed by an aluminium sheet or a lead sheet or anything denser. Now remember, these beta particles must come from the nucleus. So a beta particle has a quite high ionizing ability, a quite high penetration, and it can go through paper but is stopped by aluminium. Now a beta particle is different from a regular electron, as a regular electron exists in an energy level around the nucleus, a beta particle originates from the nucleus. So all this radiation comes from the nucleus of an atom. So in our beta decay, a neutron turns to a proton and emits an electron. Now in gamma ray radiation after a nucleus has emitted an alpha or beta particle, it may still have too much energy. It is excited. So to get rid of this energy, it emits a pulse of very high frequency electromagnetic radiation called a gamma ray. So a gamma, gamma radiation is an electrical wave. It is energy. It has no charge. This means it doesn't deflect in, in either direction in a magnetic or electrical field. It has no mass. It, has, it is only energy, so it's not very ionizing. But it can travel an unlimited distance 
resistance in the air and it can never be completely absorbed by a material. What happens is it's reduced by thick lead or concrete or anything denser but it never disappears away. Now this gamma radiation must come from the nucleus. So gamma radiation has a low ionizing ability but a high penetration. It can pass through anything. Okay, But remember this radiation must come from the nucleus of an atom as shown in this particular animation. Now what we can do is we can look at sources of radioactive emissions. Now many sources are kept in a lead lined box. This prevents alpha and beta radiation leaving the box and reduces the amount of gamma radiation leaving the box. Now the lead does not become radioactive even though the sources are kept behind lead containers because they block the radiation so they're perfectly safe to handle. But the sources themselves must always be handled with tongs because this prevents your hands from becoming contaminated. Contamination is the process of an unstable nuclei coating an object. Now irradiation, which people get confused with contamination, is the process of ionizing radiation passing through an object. Now contamination is a lot more dangerous as contamination leads to long-term irradiation and the distance factor in nuclear radiation is removed. So if you are contaminated with a radioactive source, you yourself become radioactive. However, if you are irradiated with a radioactive source, you are not radioactive and you must be aware of the difference between irradiation and contamination. So it's important that sources are always uh, always secured with tongs or with a handle and never touched by your hands to prevent them from becoming contaminated. So it's a very important idea. Now sources must be placed in a secure handle such as a clamp stand as this allows you to uh, measure the properties very carefully but the holder will become contaminated after use. Now to measure the properties of radioactive emissions we use something called a Geiger Muller counter. This is used to count radioactive particles hitting the tube. Now the counter can't tell the difference between the different types of ionizing radiation, it can only count the number of ionizing particles, alpha, beta or gamma, hitting the detector. Now this can measure something called the count rate, which is the number of ionizing particles hitting the detector every single second. So the count rate is equal to the count divided by the time in seconds. Now every area in, the earth, in earth, okay, has a background count. There's always some radioactive emissions okay, anywhere you look on the earth. So the background count should be taken before a source is in place and any radioactive reading must have its background removed from its value which we call the corrected reading. There's always a background reading in every measurement and you must always consider the effect of background radiation. Now the longer a reading is taken for the lower the percentage uncertainty of the background reading. This occurs as radioactive decay is a random event and has to be treated differently than when calculates percentage uncertainty. Now in these investigations what people do is they can test the effect of air on radiation, the range of radiation. So in these investigations you move the Geiger-Muller counter away from the radioactive source until no discernible reading can be taken by the device, there's no difference from the background and that allows you to work out how far the radiation can travel in air. Whilst you can also use the Geiger-Muller counter to test the effect of the objects on the radiation, the penetration of the radiation. So in these investigations, you place the counter on one side and the source on another side of an object and see if you get a measurable count, a count different from the background on the counter. So for example, you could place um, paper between the counter and the radioactive source and if the particle is still going through, you can work out that it's not going to be alpha. So let's summarize the radioactive properties. We've got alpha, two protons, two neutrons, high ionizing ability, low penetration, beta, a high energy electron, quite high ionizing ability, quite high penetration, and then gamma radiation, a high energy electromagnetic wave, has a low ionizing ability, but a high penetration. Now you must be able to state the composition, deflection, penetration, and ionizing ability of the three types of radiation. It's also expected you can state the uses of each radiation and what can be used to block out each type of radiation. And finally, you must be able to compare and contrast the different types of radiation. So what have we learned in today's lesson? Some atomic nuclei are unstable. The nucleus gives out radiation as it changes to become more stable. This is a random process called radioactive decay. Activity is the rate in which a source of unstable nuclei decays and it's measured in Becquerel's. 
how great is the number of decays recorded each second by a detector, a Geiger-Muller tube, and the nuclear radiation may be an alpha particle, two neutrons and two protons, a helium nucleus, a beta particle, a high-speed electron eject from the nucleus as a neutron turns into a proton, a gamma ray, electromagnetic radiation from the nucleus, or a neutron. Now, you need to have required knowledge of alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma particles in terms of their penetration, range, and ionizing power. Whilst you should be able to apply your knowledge to understand the uses of radiation and evaluate the best sources of radiation to use in a given situation. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to understand why radiation is emitted by nuclei, understand the different composition types of radioactive emissions, and understand the different properties of different types of radioactive emissions. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson where we've looked at radioactive emissions in the atomic structure topic of GCSE separate science physics. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson and have a lovely day.